Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and today is a different kind of video, a video that I've never, never really done before, this kind of video, so I hope you're looking forward to it. But anyways, a lot of other Pokemon YouTubers throughout the years have done videos on my gym, if I was a gym leader, or my evil team, or my fake region and stuff like that. And some have done videos on their fake Pokemon. I did one, one of the first Pokemon videos ever made several years ago was a video about my fake starter Pokemon. So, a lot of people have been requesting that I make similar videos, and so I figured because I'm not really that good of an artist and making a lot of art would be a lot of work, I decided to do something a little bit different. Many years ago, I started working on it when I was probably about 9 and finished probably when I was around 12 or 13. I made a book of an entire region's worth of fake Pokemon including and including main characters, gym leaders, Elite Four, a region map, evil team, all of that. And today, I'm going to be showing you that book. I'm going to flip through every single page show you all the fake Pokemon and everything in the book. Now, keep in mind, like I said, I made this a long time ago, so some of these Pokemon are pretty cool, some of them are like, that's incredibly dumb, but hopefully that's part of the part that's entertaining for you. So, without further ado, let's dive into my book on the Claren region. Alright, so here's the cover of my book. It has been drawn on many different sheets of 8x11 paper that after I finished it, we went to FedEx office, or which was Kinko's at the time, and we bound it together. There are three characters on the front. Um, the main character, Luke Champoni, his rival, Josh, and his best friend, Rags. Yes, his name is Rags. Don't judge me. We'll talk more about them later when we get to the profile on them. But anyways, what I did in this book was I, oops, was I had one, let me just make sure the camera's Looking all right? Okay, it looks good. I'm, I have an extremely ghetto setup for this. I'll, I'll show a picture on screen, but it, like, it's, it's hilarious. This is the most ghetto setup for a video I've ever had. But first, the starters. What I did for this book was I went through the entire Kanto Pokedex and I replaced Pokemon, so that way I made sure I had a balance of, you know, what types and everything and stuff like that. And so, like, I made the starters. I had, like, an early game bird type, flying type, and then after I did that, I kind of just mixed them all up. So, if you have watched my fake starter Pokemon video, you'll recognize Mazong here. Um, if you want more information on Mazong, you should watch that video, but he's essentially a little grass guy. He's got claws on his hands right here that do not retract, um, and those can be turned into vines that he swings from trees. And if you look back on the cover, here's a Mazong doing the vine things right here. So then Mazong evolves into a very poorly drawn Lizon. My new drawing of Lizon, well, new, three years ago. But that drawing is much better. And he evolves into Crizzard. And if you notice, I have in re pretty bad handwriting <laughs> their type, height, weight, ability, and dex data on them. So Crizzard here is its wings allow it to fly freely. Its extremely long tail is good for fighting, grabbing things, and climbing. So, stuff like that. Every single Pokemon, I'm not gonna go through all that because that this would be like a two hour video. Um, but moving on, so the fire starter. Now, if you've seen my fake starter Pokemon video, you'll be like, why? This is not the same. That's because when I made the fake starter Pokemon video, I looked back on these and I decided that I kind of wanted to change things up. Um, because the fire line in this is, I will have you know, I had the idea to have a penguin starter Pokemon before Game Freak. Because I invented Penguin before Piplup was released. So, just want to toot my own horn for that. But it's a fire-type Penguin line. And the reason I changed this later, you'll see when I get to the final line. But essentially, Penguin, the fire-type Penguin. Then that evolves into Neutral, the fire-type macaroni something Penguin, I think. That's why its name is, is like just a change of Noodle. Then there is Empra, a fighting fire penguin Pokemon, which is very obviously a complete ripoff of Blaziken. <laughs> so that is why down the road I was like, okay, I should change this. And then the water starters are Aquat, which is not Spalch and Rochelch. Spalch and Rochelch are actually later in this. They are not starter water Pokemon. 
and Glush Shelf. I'll explain that when I get to it. Um, but I changed it when I made that video because I was like, I am not confident I could draw Aquat and make it look good. And it looks kind of weird here. <laughs> but this is Aquat the water type cat. Um, who evolves into Feebrine, combination of feline and brine, who evolves into Tiden, Tide and Lion. I need to scoot something over real quick, sorry. All right, so those are the starter Pokemon for the Claren region. Um, moving on from that, you've got Hixon. I liked Hixon a lot. This is the Venonat replacement, I think, which does look admittedly a lot like Venonat, but I like the legs I designed for it. Bug Poison type evolves into Hixor, which I thought it was cool how its body became elongated like that. The, the size of the drawings in these sheets is extremely inconsistent. Um, so then we've got Woodriller, whose beak is a drill, who evolves into Hecril. Both of these are pure flying type because I was like, no, the fact that they're normal flying is dumb. Like they should just be pure flying type, they're birds. So that's what I did. Um, many years before Tornadus was a thing. So, then we've got Vinake, Poison Grass type, Vine Snake Pokemon, who evolves into Swingobra, who then evolves into Vineobra. So, imagine being Tarzan, grabbing a vine in the jungle, and it's actually a freaking snake. Goodness. So this this line is one that I think is pretty dumb. Sorry, I'm just periodically checking the camera to make sure it's like still recording and all as well. But it everything seems fine. It seems fine. Just a second. Okay, sorry about that. It looked like it was recording, like, vertical video instead of horizontal video, so I'm pretty sure I could just rotate it in the editing, but if not, I'll re-record that beginning part. But anyways, Scorpion Pillbug Pishpill. Um, it's just a pill bug with scorpion traits. Who then evolves into Rolly Sting, who then evolves into Scorpill, more bug poison type Pokemon. Uh, I feel like this replaced the Beedrill line. Um, moving on, Sniffso, the long nose Pokemon. Uh, not my best work. Same with its evolution, Smellso. So, here we have Scotch, which is the first Pokemon that I created for this book based on which I came up with the idea while playing at the pool with a yellow pool noodle and just riding it like an, like an animal. And so I, I made it into a Pokemon. Why it's called Scotch, no idea. <laughs> but it's a pool noodle Pokemon, it's water type. <laughs> and then its female counterpart is Bermuda, because I also had a green pool noodle. Why are they named that? No idea. So, this one was one I was reasonably, I think is reasonably cool. They are the Abra replacements. Three-stage Psychic type. Now you see it, and now you don't. Because now you see it, now you don't. They are bunny type Pokemon based on magicians. You know, they got the top hat on the tail right there. And they, um, they can turn invisible at will. So, uh, that's pretty cool. And then Skilkerm, well, Silkworm, Pokemon, Pupon, and then Adult Moth, Adult Moth, Adult Moth. Anyways, Earth Owl evolves into Minarok, who evolves into Boldro. So this is kind of like, honestly, these kind of look like what Geodude should have turned into, to be entirely honest. <laughs> Um, then we go, the, the, the flying type, again, pure flying, this is Flegess, who evolves into Flegido, who evolves into Flegardon. They have hair just like the Pidgeot line, so you can tell how creative I was with that. Uh, this one is one I like, the drawing's not great, but this is Coltorch, a fire type zebra Pokemon. So I came up with a zebra Pokemon before Zeb Striker, but it was fire type. And essentially, its stripes glow like red hot. Um, it evolves into Z-Burn. Um, same, the stripes glow hot. <laughs> um, here we have Karatai, or Karatai. It's Karatai. 
and then Karato, and then Karatan. So, um, just for the record, I had Pokemon wearing karate outfits before sock and throw, so, uh, hello. Moving on. Here we go. This is the uh, Nido King and Nido Queen replacement Pokemon. We got Pespin, who I've always thought was adorable, and then Poynton and Pushpon. I think Pushpon's pretty cool looking. I, I don't know what I'm doing with his eyebrows up there, but Pushpon is a cool Pokemon. Sorry, I'm like paranoid that my recording's not working. It seems like it's working fine, but we'll move on from that. We got Pestin, the female equivalent. It has little uh, poison claws. The the difference between this line is this line. The poison is mainly delivered through the horns, um, whereas these, it's delivered through the claws. You can see the claws right here. Poison. I mean, Pokemon poison. What was I thinking? And then Poito. The final evolution. Here we go. Bangar, the tiger centaur-like Pokemon. Just a normal type, um, but it's very fast. Here we got Garuder. Rock ground type and Gargruder. One arm becomes like super buff. Um, moving on. So this is these two are probably some of my favorites from this. Amphish, um, who you know it's amphibian fish, uh, and I really like the design of these because what it evolves into is Amphark, amphibian fark. Amphibian Shark. What I'm trying to get at here is that while I really like this Pokemon, I think it should it would benefit from a name change because it sounds too much like I am fart. So maybe like I don't know. Let me know in the comments below your suggestions for what this Pokemon could be named. But I thought it was cool because it like it changes from like a fish into like a humanoid creature, hence the amphibian aspect of its name. Um so that's cool. Arzo, this is based on some like farming equipment that I saw that had, looked like it had big arms coming up. I saw as a kid. So Arzo, it like walks on its arms, its legs really aren't used for much at all. Um, that evolves into Arzon. He gets two more arms that have uh, blades on them. They're ground type Pokemon. We got Nutroot, no evolution, standalone root Pokemon. <laughs> Now we got Flyma, the flying type llama Pokemon. Got clouds on it, who evolves into Air Paca. It gets bigger and gets another pair of legs. <laughs> so, good for me. This is Serki, little ghost type Pokemon, who evolves into Soupki, who evolves into Fierki. Now, the thing that I thought was pretty cool about Soupki and Fierki, um, if you didn't notice, these are scary, spooky, and freaky, but with the words change, the letters change around slightly. The lower half, it can change into different shapes. Um, so it can change it into two legs, it can change into, like, wheels, I remember thinking of, but I don't know why it would do that. Um, but it does that, like, it, I was kind of inspired by Danny Phantom in that regard. Um, and then its hands also can change shape to a certain degree, so. Cool ghost type Pokemon I made. Uh, this this line is one that I think is great. This is Nutoko. He's a little coconut head Apatosaurus. Uh, you can un you can see its body better once I you show its evolutions. This is Tropico, and its final evolution Palmoco. So I, I just always thought Nutoko was just like fun to say. He's like a cute little cute little guy. So I like that line. Uh, this is Musmune. A bug fighting type Pokemon it evolves into Hornets, who is freaking terrifying. This thing is huge. It's six foot four. <laughs> it's like a big, nasty bug. So if you run into this in the wild and you are not an experienced trainer, you're in trouble. So then we've got Pangodillo, really random combination of Anteater and Pangolin. Um, I don't know why I made that. Uh, this is Salaqua, another fish Pokemon I like. Salaqua, water type, and then. It turns into Salaguano, who uh, is a water ground type, and it can walk on its fins. So, two different amphibian-like Pokemon that I liked, that I made. <laughs> We've got Twirlzo. It's main, it like puts its feet together and it spins like a top, which is somewhat of a Hitmontop ripoff, but is it really? Because it's not spinning on its head. 
Then we got Zospin, who is Torzo's evolution. Then we got Lightnan. Lightnan's just a lightning creature. <laughs> this is like, the, I think, the Pikachu replacement. And then it's evolution, Thundro. Again, you know, changing from yellow to orange, P Pikachu to Raichu. So, some are more creative than others. This is a Pokemon I've always thought was pretty creative. It's called Frickless. And it is a cheetah Pokemon that experience that has the ability to basically turn off friction to where friction just doesn't affect its body. And that's why its appearance looks like it's all stretched out, you know, because it's moving so fast. And it's an, it's incredibly fast. It's the fastest Pokemon of all time. Um, so, I mean, of course it still has friction on its feet, but it's a normal type Pokemon. Just always thought that was cool. Uh, here we got Flyzo. Uh, these are the Zubat replacements because they're flying poison, but I think they're much cooler than Zubat and Golbat. Uh, Flyzo evolves into a Wingzo. That's cool looking. That is a cool looking Pokemon. Um, then we've got Igneok, Rock Fire type. Thought this one was pretty cool. It's just like this molten rock magma man. <laughs> Then we've got Korchakada. Now, this is a weird line, looking back on it. Admittedly, they are... This is the Eevee replacement. And it's... They're they're very human-like. They are... They can speak English, and the hairstyles on the top, like, vary. There's, like, many different styles you can find. But they can speak with humans. Um, and depending on whether you use a Moonstone, a Duskstone, or a Dawnstone, like I said... The creation of this book spanned over many years, so I started it before 4th Gen, finished it after 4th Gen was done. So there's like a, you know, the Dawn Stone and the Dusk Stone, that's 4th Gen stuff. But it has different evolutions, so it's got a Fighting type evolution, Punchada, it's got a Psychic type evolution, Psychada, and a Dark type evolution, Nitada. It's not the uh, water, electric, fire. I wanted to do the dark psychic fighting triangle because I always thought that was a cool triangle. And there were rumors of the fourth gen starters being that triangle instead of water, fire, grass. So I was inspired. Here we have Harpy. This actually was originally an animal I created for a sixth grade science project and I turned it into a Pokemon. Harpy the eagle with claws on its wings, so. That's cool. Uh, here we have, this is a stupid one. Show Rambo. It's a rock, paper, scissors Pokemon. <laughs> and Beauchamro. Let's move on. Here we got Polarub. My old uh, water and ice type polar bear Pokemon. It made it much more water type. It has webbed feet and it's got this ice shield on its back. Um, Polarese, as you can tell, it gets spikier and angrier. Like most of my evolutions. We got Flagato. This is an interesting Pokemon. It's this ghost-type Pokemon that has flagpoles on it. But any flag you attach to the flagpoles, like, instantly becomes very tattered and, like, torn. It's like... If the flags on its back can be changed. They're used by teams to fly mascot flags, but when a flag is attached, it becomes very weak and gets torn easily. So, interesting stuff, I would say. Here we got Seaval, another... Kind of like Sniffs out, just a pink Pokemon with... One big body part. Not my favorite. Aizai is its evolution. Here's a Pokemon I was like, Polate. He's a little pollution Pokemon. Uh, his, his arms are like gunk cannons, so he can like shoot stuff like that. Uh, he evolves into Trashkit, name inspired by Trashkit Ball. <laughs> so, thought they were pretty cool Pokemon. Kind of look like poison aliens. So this is another very, very early Pokemon, uh, Lithosphon. I was inspired by the Lithosphere and the Asthenosphere, like layers of the mantle underground. And it's a lot like Slugma, but it's not quite like Slugma, I guess, because it's not a slug, it's just like a little blob creature. It evolves into Asthenosphon, who gets bigger and gets legs. <laughs> so, early ones. Okay, this is Snown. It is a snow cone Pokemon. Part of the reason I have always been hesitant to judge the Vanillix line as harshly as many others is because I created a similar cold dessert Pokemon. So, uh... It's cute, though. You gotta admit, Snown is cute. But let's move on. Let me just check. Okay. Still recording. Solid. Here we have Kukmon, which is... 
very close to nunchuck backwards. Not exactly. Um, because nunchuck backwards is K-C-U-H-C-N-U-N. And so I just kind of went with how that sounded to a little bit different. Um, he's got nunchucks for hands. And then we have kits, which is a misspelled stick backwards. Um... Their fighting type Pokemon. Here we have Ampery, little electric steel type, and Bataramp. So, uh, I think those are okay. Here we have Boace, water type Pokemon based on. I played the cello in sixth grade, and so this inspired that Boace based on the bow that you use for string instruments. Turns into Bassace, which is uh, a combination of bass and bass. <laughs> um. It's just, I always thought cellos and basses and stuff kind of looked like fish, so I kind of made this it, this ferocious fish monster thing. Here we have Baku, dragon psychic type Pokemon. It, uh, they kind of glow. They, like, always have this, like, they glow a little bit, and so when they move, there's, like, a glowing energy trail that comes behind them. It evolves into Basu. No idea where the name comes from. Don't know why I decided to name them that. Then we've got Psycaf, who is has a third eye that's blind, but that is the focal point for its psychic powers. Um, it shoots attacks and can read minds. Oh, yeah, it can read minds. Ability, keen eye. <laughs> and it involves just Cyphalo, uh, based on American Bison, Buffalo Pokemon. Um has third eyes, but the third eye can't see. It just does psychic things. Here we've got Mole Sheen, ground steel type Pokemon. Uh, it's like a bulldozer digging machine miner mole who evolved into Molinator. Pretty cool. Here we got Cubolt, who probably should have added a second B because it looks like Cubolt. Uh, but it's a electric, dark, electric cat thing. Honestly, can't remember whether I came up with this before or after Luxray was a thing. I like, I'm pretty sure I came up with it before Luxray was a thing, but I'm not positive. Um, it evolves into Shadult. I always thought those were cool electric cat Pokemon. Then we've got Camu Cub, who they, they have grass on their back. They're grass ground type and they like, their claws are, it's hard to see in this drawing, but they're flat, you know, and they use those to dig and like camouflage and just have the grass sticking out of the back. It evolves into Cheater. If you can see the flat claws a little bit better in this in this drawing. Um We got Smell Oak, little stink bug Pokemon. Oh, I always thought this one was a reasonably well drawn Pokemon. It just shoots stink bombs and stink gas out of these two little cannons on his booty. We got Dolphiel, the first dolphin Pokemon. It's a just pure water type, combina com com a combination of dolphins and eels, so poor pish. So, interesting combination that I did. Here we got Tunzo. This is just a little... If they were, if they were gonna make like a tongue, I'd rather it looked like this, because this is, just looks like a nice little lizard who just has like a long, colorful tongue, not just like a big human tongue. So, I think that was the lick a tongue replacement. We've got Dart Tadpole, Poison Dart Frogs, based on them. Poison Water, here's Dart Frog, bright, colorful, you know, Dart Frog Pokemon, but it's got a, a literal dart on its face. <laughs> we got, all right, so this is the first prehistoric Pokemon. One thing I didn't like about prehistoric Pokemon, and still annoys me to this day, is the fact that they're rock type, because they're revived from fossils. What if there was a dual type Pokemon back millions of years ago? Why, what happened, like, why does, I don't like that every fossil Pokemon is rock type just because it was revived from a fossil. So I created um, prehistoric Pokemon that were not rock type. So this is Munchator. It's a mammalian aquatic alligator type thing. It's got like teeth that like crush rather than cut. Um, so it's water type, hangs out in shallow waters. This is Munchathus. Changes from a water type to a flying and fighting type. So that's pretty cool. It gets a bit more aggressive when it evolves. Um, we got Stegosuchus, normal type prehistoric Pokemon, 
who evolves into Kentrasuchus. Um, again, just a big, strong, normal type Pokemon. And then this is pro this is my favorite prehistoric Pokemon. It's called Prizterix. It's based on a combination of um, Archaeopteryx and Prisms. This Pokemon, when it is not exposed to sunlight, is white. I mean, the legs and the beak stay the same, but it's just pure white. But then when it get exposed, gets exposed to the sunlight, it turns brilliantly beautiful rainbow colors. And I'm, to this day, still very proud of this Pokemon because I think it's a really cool Pokemon. Um, but that's the last prehistoric one. This is Sozar, steel normal type Pokemon, based on pretty much just like the scissors that we had in middle school that like when you pull them apart, I kind of, thought kind of looked like animals. Silly thing. We got Lockock, which is literally based on one of the door handles in my fa old family minivan. So, uh, that one's pretty dumb. So is its evolution. Lockjock. I told you, some of these were good, some of these were not. Ooh, another great one. Dentral, the normal type teeth Pokemon. Okay, Basic. This one's fine. Basic is a water type Pokemon based on the Basilisk. Basilisks are the litter lizards that run on water. That's what Basic is based on. It does. It can do more than run on water. It can stand on water. It's like a Jesus, Jesus lizard. It evolves into Basuk, which is just bigger and better <laughs> at that. This is Moron, the psychic steel lawnmower Pokemon. Now this looks weird, but I honestly think it's not bad. Um, it. It's got these blades that just like it kind of levitates around. It can like attack people with. And I came up with the idea for it to have a po for it to have an attack called Weed Whacker, which is a steel type move that is also super effective on grass type Pokemon. Um, and then several years later, they came up with the attack Freeze Dry, which is a similar concept, ice type move, but also super effective on water types. Um, so I was pretty pleased when that, that something similar to that actually showed up in game because I did come up with that as a kid. Um, this is Devolt. Just Electric Dark and Devlame Fire Dark. They have this rivalry like Zangoose and Seviper. And then Sim Swim, Sim Fim, and Sim Gim. These are the Poliwag line. They all have the lips like Poliwag. <laughs> and then we've got Bow and the Bowl. Pufferfish Pokemon. Quillfish already existed, yet I still made these. So. We've got Cavern, this is a weird one. It's like, it can never leave its cave. It just like can stick out. So I don't even know how they move, um, but it likes to draw on its cave. <laughs> so that's kind of a weird premise. This is Brachyburn, the fire type Brachiosaurus Pokemon. Has flames coming out of its neck. Evolution is Scorchosaurus. So that's, that's pretty sweet. Okay, still recording. This is Sting Enemy, the Anemone Pokemon, falls into Anemo Sting. Thought these were all right. And I got Snouncer and uh, Totriler. These are these are weird. They're just like long-necked dogs. Mm -hmm. and then we've got Capano. This was just a random one I came up with when I was very young, and that I decided to make into like a better drawn version of it. Um, it's like the cape thing it has coming out of its shoulders, like an extra limb essentially. Its cape is like a third arm. And then, okay, here's Spalsh. So Spalsh, which if you watch the original My Fake Starter Pokemon video, uh, you saw a better drawn version of Spalsh, and here's Wushelsh. But there's no Glushelsh. The reason for that is I actually came up with a second region of Pokemon that I never put into a book like this, and I gave Spalsh and Wushelsh a new evolution, Glushelsh. And when, which is in the video, and when I, was like, I don't really think I would be good at redrawing Aquat. Let me make Spalsh and Rishalsh the starters. <laughs> so that's what I did. And I brought Glushalsh over and made it a new starter Pokemon, but that was not the case originally. I mean, it was just the two of them. All right, here's the pseudo legendary. We're almost to the end of the Pokemon. Dracozard, a uh, spitting Pokemon. It can shoot its spit up to 20 feet if it hits foe in the face. It is temporarily blinded. Wow, okay, I didn't remember that. Um, this is Lizargon. Its evolution gets blade scales on its body. And then the final evolution, Gilagon. Um, 
which I thought was pretty sweet. Okay, now we get to the legendaries. So these are the replacements of um, the legendary birds. We've got Haluna, the moon dog Pokemon. We've got Pure, the sun cat Pokemon. And Hisstar, the electric flying star snake Pokemon. So, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> I thought, that, I thought they're all right Pokemon, but it is like a ripoff of the birds, like I said. And then the final Pokemon is Contitan, which is the, it created the region. It's this big towering ground dragon Pokemon, and it's just has earth moving powers, which is kind of like Groudon, but not really. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's Contitan. And so now we're getting to Gym Leaders and Badges. All right, so on to Gym Leaders and Badges. The first Gym Leader is Charlie. Fire-type Gym Leader runs the fire department in the first town. Uh, he has a Bracky Burn to India and gives you the Singe Badge. The story of Rags, who is Luke's best friend, he was a judge at the gym and he decides to travel with Luke. Then there is Dustin, the ground type gym leader. He has an Earth Owl and an Arzon. Then we've got Yvonne, the first dark type gym leader, okay? She has a Devlame, Nightada, and a Shadow to give you the Shadow Badge. I don't know if I have a, a Dune Badge. That's what Dustin's, Dustin's badge is. Then we've got Griffin, the flying type gym leader, gives you the Elevation Badge. He has a Prizterix. And I always imagined, like, for the final battle when he sends out his Prizterix, he opens the roof of his gym and there's this epic sky battle between Rainbow Prizterix and whatever the opponent has. Um, then we've got Ivy, the Vine Badge, Grass-type Gym Leader. Then Shelby, the Water-type Gym Leader, Steam Badge, has her battles at the local pool. She is a professional swimmer. Then we've got Allie, the normal type gym leader, who is a uh, track star runner and has a very large head. Uh, common badge is her badge. I feel like they actually made a common badge later. I might be tripping. But if there is a common badge, I feel like Lenora's badge might be the common badge. But I had came up with it first. And the final is Zachary, dragon type gym leader, gives you the legend badge. So he's, uh, he's pretty... Uh, Gnarly. Um, then we move on to the Elite Four. We have Grant, the Rock type gym leader. Rock type Elite Four. He's got Boldro, Aniac, Bo Shamro, Pango, Diller, and Gar Gruder. He's obviously very buff. Then we've got Brittany, the old lady whose Pokeball is kept in her the top of her cane. And she's got two Thundros, two Devils, a Shadow, and a Batter Amp. Um so that's cool then we've got peggy because <laughs> like if you peg somebody it's like you're you're hitting them with something and she's a kickboxer champion uh fighting type she's actually rags's older sister so fun fact um she's got all these pokemon here and then ty poison type elite four member who has uh Vinobra, Scorpio, Poido, Wingzo, Smello, Pushbone, and a Flyzo that's just kind of a pet. He doesn't battle with it. He keeps his Pokeball in the little uh, thing around his necklace. And I... Oh, I didn't make a champion. Okay. I don't know why I didn't do that. Oh, because I thought of it more like the anime where the tournament was... The, you didn't battle the Elite Four to win. You know, it's just like... It's just like a competitive tournament among all the trainers. But people you should know... The main cast, I guess, in my read, the main character is Luke Champoni. Um, and, of course, Champoni. I do have him win the league the first time. If I was going back on this, not sure I would do that, but when I was a kid, I was living vicariously through Luke Champoni because you can see the resemblance between him and me. Um, but he starts with Mazong. When he reaches the league, he has a team of a lot of my favorites of the Pokemon that I created. Uh, Krizzard, Zeburn, Harpy, Kentrasuchus, Trashkit, Amphark, a Shiny Shadult, and a Sandike. Sandike, I'll get to that in a second. Um, because that is not a Pokemon in this region. And then Rags, his best friend, the two of them travel together. There's just two of them. He was a 
judge at the first gym, and he decides to travel with Luke. He uh, has an he starts with a Lithosphon because it's a fire type gym. It later evolves into his Asthemosphon, but he gets a variety of Pokemon. He gets a Cyphalo, a Kukmon, a Hixor, and an Aquat. Um, and then the rival Josh Bailey, whose outfit I think is very well styled. I like how it matches. Um, but he has an Emperor, Boldro, Salaguana, Thundra, Moran, and Pekril in their final battle. Because they, the two of them actually, in my head, they match up in the finals of the league and Luke wins. And then Professor Maple is the Clarion Region Professor. And then Nurse Happy, because Nurse Joy, Nurse Happy. <laughs> and then Team Arrow, these are the main antagonists. Um... I didn't flesh out like all the leaders and admins, I just fleshed out like the Team Rocket spoofs that were just regularly attacking <laughs> Luke and Rags. Um, you know, they like flying, I guess. They're Meowth guys, uh, Fli Fligess, I think was what I, yeah, Fligess, but he's got a little extra hair. He's, he's styling. Um, Ken and Jackie. <laughs> And then, here is a map of the region, so let me, I gotta look, gotta make sure this is matched up well, because this is, this map is something I think is, okay, it looks all good on the, on the phone screen. So, you start in Mechrano Town, okay, and I had a code here, um, okay, no I didn't, I didn't have a code. If it's circle, it's a town, if it's a square, it is a, um, city, and... I'm gonna have to remember which ones have gyms and which ones don't. I'm reasonably sure I do, but you start in Megrano Town, make your way to Hinguini City, then you get to Saluka Town. Saluka Town's where the first gym is. Then you go through the Kentuka Tunnel, you get to Kentara Town, but Ken or Kentora, Kentora Town. When you get there, the gym leader's not there. They make you go down to the Kentitan Desert to find Dustin, the ground type gym leader. Uh, I actually should have drawn a route here because there is a route there. The idea is that you just can't cross the river yet because either like you don't have surf and there's no bridge or the bridge was busted or something. So then you move over, you have to go over here to Zonka Town. There's a cycling road all the way here, but you don't have a bike yet. So then you go Route 305, you get to Laura Town. This is where the, uh, what the heck is her name? The dark type gym leader, Yvonne, is. Then you can now cross the Super River. This is the Mighty River, the Great River, Super River. You can now cross the Super River and go to Highland City, which is where Griffin is, the fighting or the flying type gym leader. Um, there is a waterfall here. This is lake. It's like a lake that's and then a waterfall. So you can't go this way yet. Um, and the cycling road, I have it going over Highland City. In reality, it would have like a stop in Highland City. There's two cycling roads. But again, you don't have a bike. So you have to go out here to Torcon City. No gym leader here, I believe. Um, and then the prehistoric island, there's this island that's discovered offshore that has just pre, it's teeming with prehistoric Pokemon. So in this game, you don't revive Pokemon from fossils. You catch them on this island. Um, and in my headcanon of Luke's journey, one of his Pokemon gets kidnapped and they chase the bad guys to Prehistoric Island, and that's where he catches his Kentrosuchus, or his Stegosuchus that later evolves. Um, then in Torcon City, you get a bike, you can travel the cycling road to get to Wenwar Town. This is where Ivy's gym is. Um, and there's the Forest Frenzy that you can go to, which is the Safari Zone, basically. Then you can go over to Kaindo Town, and then Corvon Town. Corvon City. One of these has the water type gym leader, Shelby, but I can't remember which one. Um, so, what are you gonna do? Then you go through Mount Power, which has the Team Arrow hideout either in it or on top of it, which in retrospect, that'd be really cool <laughs> to have an evil team hideout on the top of a mountain. That'd be awesome. And then there's Banco Town, or ba Banco City, you can now make a quick trip back if you would like, because you have the bike. Um, in retrospect, I just realized if you get the bike here, you could come back here and then go here, but you're not supposed to do that. I feel like you'd come up with some like ridiculous roadblock that makes you still not able to do that. So you come to Banco Town, 
Um, and then that's where the seventh gym leader is, Allie. And then the Ultima City is where the last gym leader is. And then you take this water route, go up to the Victory Road, up the waterfall through the Victory Road to Invincipa, which is where the Pokemon League is. If it's a game, that's where the Elite Four and Champion is. And if it's a the story in my head, that's where the tournament is. So that is the Claren Region map, which I think is a pretty sweet map. And then lastly, this is Sandike. Remember how I said I created like a second region? Um, the starters in there are ground, ice, and steel. So ground is good on steel, steel is good on ice, ice is good on ground. Um, and Sandike is the ground type starter there. Uh, Luke gets one of those at the end of his journey. Um, as kind of a, you know, like, preview Pokemon. But, uh... But yeah, that is the end of my book! That's, that's it! You, you, we just leafed through all of it. I, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. It's probably gonna be pretty freaking long. So if you sat through all of it, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I... I'm still pretty proud of this book. It's not great. It's obviously made by a kid, but I think... It's really cool that I have finished it and I always have this memory to cherish and now I got to share it with you. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. I almost said answer the comment question. There is no comment question, but yeah, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.